Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Level Up. I wanted to do a quick mic test because I had just a little problem right before we were going on here. So can you hear me okay? Let me know. Can you hear that? I just wanted to make sure before I keep rolling that we're good. Uh-oh, can't post comments. Oh, that must be a Facebook thing. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? We'll just wait until somebody pops in there. And maybe I should put Facebook up on it. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, Robin, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. My new digs. Um, good. All right. Thank you, guys. Good. So, uh, welcome in. I, a little bit, I had something that was important to me going on right before here. So, I... Um, uh, took care of that. I was just kind of pulling it in. Hey, Rob, good to see you. Yeah, this is great. Look at this. Oh, this is wonderful. Robin, oh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Hey, Kristen and Rob. <laughs> this is great. Wow, you touched my heart. You did. You touched my heart by showing up. That was awesome. Wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> Been through a lot, and uh, that was great. Hi, Esmond. Good to see you. Did I? I thought I got Rob up there too. Here's Rob. Let's do this real quick. This was something I was looking forward to. My normal mic. Oh, hey, Sandra. Good to see you. Awesome. Great. Welcome. Glad you're here. I have my other mic. Working just fine. I recorded all kinds of stuff over the weekend and then plug it in and it doesn't work. So go figure. But I've got a wireless on here, so we're good. I need to settle into this. I don't know if you do. <laughs> I'm doing this for me. <laughs> Come join, right? of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. I thought I had my emotions together and then I saw Robin come in and It just meant the world to me. It meant the world to me, seriously. And you don't know how, but it did. Hey, Brittany. Are you on Facebook now? Wow. Haven't seen you for a while. Glad to see you. This is great. Well, obviously, we have some business to do tonight because we are just mere hours away. What are we about? Um, let's see. I am so not doing well with this time zone. 3 a.m. Eastern would be midnight here, would be seven hours from now. We have the lunar eclipse. And um, if you guys are, hey, Laura, <laughs> what a great picture. I love that. That's great. Mary, good to see you. Oh, okay. Okay. So Robin has been here. Well, that's just, well. I thought I had my emotions together and then realizing that it's still tender. Here's Susan it's with her new profile picture. Let's hear it for Susan. That is a great shot. I love that picture. Oh, wow. Um, 
here's the deal. We're using this platform called StreamYard and uh, it integrates to Facebook and YouTube. So with one button, we can go to both places. But Facebook requires, as part of their security, that you click the link where we are here. Like you'll have to find the link that has the live and there's there's a link in there. There's some text and then a link. And you click that and you say, yes, I can use my picture, use my name and my picture, and then refresh your screen. So we'll be we'll be gone for about four or five seconds while you do that. But just hit, you know, click up there in the URL, hit return, refresh it, and then you should pop up. So if you want to do that, uh, that's how you do it. And um, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. It's not on our end. It's... Um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, San Francisco or Palo Alto, California. I'm sure the letter will get there just like going to the IRS and say, make it like YouTube <laughs> on StreamYard. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. <laughs> no, but look at this great profile picture. I saw she changed that, what, maybe about two weeks, a week or so ago. And it just is so wonderful. I love that. What a great smile and just bringing your radiance into the place. Ah, that's just wonderful. Um, and see, even Esmon is like, yeah, thumbs up. This is so great. Oh, hey, thanks for uh, joining us, Kathleen. That's awesome. Good. Well, hopefully we'll make your work more productive tonight. Okay, so feeling the emotions. Well, it has been strong. There's no question. Um, it has definitely been strong, but we're going to do a new moon ceremony tonight like you've never done one before. <laughs> we're going to bring it all in. And I think we'll take advantage of it. I got a great little message from Robert Glasscock, actually, today that we were recording earlier. And he just summed it up so well. I was like, oh, thank you, because I've been looking at the shadow of this. And, uh, you know, it's day by day, Susan. It really is. And thank you. I appreciate it. I am standing in what we stand in and just trying to be on the highest ground I can. What I'm really missing more than anything in the world right now is Lake Junaluska. I'd give anything for a couple of hours at that lake right now. Oh. <laughs> Rob, could we negotiate? How about would you put it on a poster board and go walk out there and stand up there while everybody's driving into work? <laughs> That would be, that would be something else. Oh boy. <clears throat> That's great. Hey, Liz, good to see you here tonight. Thank you. Wow. We just got, this is great. This is great. This is great. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. We'll get it figured out. We sure will. Keep trying on that because that's the process. You click that link and then you click that link and then it comes up. So, and I hope this image isn't going to go wonky on me. I just saw that thing. My internet is back there in the den way back there and i do have a cable long enough but i didn't string it out tonight maybe i'll have to start doing that hey jennifer <laughs> rob rob is like sure i'll do it <laughs> i have nothing else to do tomorrow <laughs> oh no that's great well good we'll be careful and uh we'll do a meditation here that you can ah here, how about trying that? Thanks, Rob. Appreciate that very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, Melissa, good to see you from the Great Lakes. And Mary from the Great Lakes up there. Yeah, thanks, Rob, for covering us on that. I'll just leave that up for a minute. Whoop. Oh, critical solar flare. Yeah, we had a big one. We had a big Yeah, sure, Laura, I sure will. In fact, maybe we could do that now. I think we've got probably a pretty good uh, representation. Let me just mention a couple of things that we're doing here. I wanted to get a double rainbow because I realized that it was last week that the emotions just came out about my personal situation, which we're not going to talk about tonight. We're doing rainbows tonight, and that's why I chose this. And I chose this in honor of my family. 
tonight is going to be in honor of my family, and there has been progress upward. So I want you guys to stand with me in that. There has been upward progress. And I just thought those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And that's what we're standing in. Now, we do have eclipses coming up. One is tomorrow, as we mentioned, and we're going to focus on that one tonight. And um, I am going to do, make every effort possible to get to Sedona. And um, what I'm planning on doing is being around Friday through the eclipse. And I'll be in my van, so I'll be hither, thither, and yon. <laughs> But I am planning, I'm going to try to make it. And it's really the only thing about try in this is just my health to make sure that I can. I'm not running at full speed yet. Um, but if I can, I'm going to be there. And if you can make it and you just, here's the deal. Here's what I've been kind of putting out to the folks that I had emails on is if you want to get yourself to Sedona, get yourself to Sedona. If you uh, don't count on me, count on me as 50-50. So you're not disappointed if I'm not there. So don't come just for that, but come if you wanted to come or get a cancelable reservation. And I'll let you know several days before because I have to get the van ready and everything. So either, yeah, I'm doing this or no, I'm not. I'm really, really thinking that it's a greater than, quite a bit greater than 50% chance, but I just have to be careful. And I've been through a lot. So um, I'm just respecting that. Um, and realizing that overexertion is one of the main triggers of this stuff I've got. So, okay, so um, that's the deal. And then we will connect amongst each other. A lot of people have not checked their email who responded. So I've I reached out, but stuff goes to the spam box. So anyway, if you just want to um, try to, you know, if you want to come join us on that, what I'm going to do is a little ceremony and everything, and we'll find a really cool place to do that. We do have a local guide. She has to work during the day, so she won't be with us during the time. But anyway, um, uh, you know, yes, I am planning on doing Sedona. I'm going to try, try to make it. The other thing I wanted to just mention, and I know there's been some conversation in the Facebook group on this, is the Book of the Moon audiobook is out. And oh my goodness, I there have been some uh, really great comments and... and uh, um, you guys are loving it. And I just so record, loved recording it. I see it's almost 14 hours long. Wow. Um, that it is just such a great book. And it's so timely right now because, of course, everything is focused on these eclipses. So if you're at all interested, the book, I'll tell you the, the nature of the book is that he talks about like a doctorate level stack of information about the moon, about its orbit, about its everything. I mean, it's it's core, it's gravitational pull, everything. There is so much in there about the moon. You will learn so much. And then he talks about uh, that... Uh, he he goes through a lot, and it's almost TMI for some because it is it goes into the weeds. But he talks about how he came up with this eight phase system that he follows, and um, that's the part that I mean it's it's really great astrological knowledge, but it's not a lot you can use like tomorrow kind of thing. But it's good information, and then. The whole big bulk of the book is the eight phases of the moon, starting at the new moon and working its way to the full moon and then back down again to the new moon. And it's just as a really wonderful treatise on um, our soul's path. It's what it's all about. It's our soul's path. So wanted to make you aware of that. It is out. And then I put up today, this morning, <laughs> that I did this video from right here and it's about 40 minutes long, and it's just uh, a um, overview of the two eclipses. We go back and look at the October eclipses, 
And then I talk about this special event that's going on in the Middle East that you may have seen the stories on, the sacrifice of the red heifers. And I talk about that as the last because I, I think with a lot of the things built into this eclipse, that event, if it happens, is going to be super significant. So that's kind of the what's going on around here. Um, now, let's see. Uh, let me catch up. I know we're trying to get this thing fixed with the um, um, StreamYard thing. And I hope, thank you guys in, on Facebook for supporting this. I really do appreciate it. Let me go back to what Laura asked here about this critical solar flare. I put this up in the Facebook group yesterday, came over the app and it came this morning and uh, wouldn't go away. And it came with a buzzer like an emergency system. And I was in there recording with Robert. Fortunately, we weren't right in the middle of the greatest pontification about astrology that you could ever imagine. But it and um, and I had my ringer off. So it penetrated the ringer. So that was a serious deal. All right, here's, here's kind of what my take is on it. And it was a KP8. So there are basically three ways that these solar flares are measured. And I, I, so I don't have a graphic, but you know that it looks like a blemish on the surface of the sun and they've been coming and going. We have two together now that are really close. And the other day when it fired off, I mean, it was Friday morning or Saturday morning, they were sending emissions out at the same time. Now, for the earth to be affected, that spot on the sun has to be in alignment with the earth from the perspective of space trajectory. So as that energy enters space, if it clips the earth, and I mean, think about the earth, you know, as like a pinhead compared to the sun, which is huge, that that's a margin of error. I mean, like it has to be really precise. The emissions have to be really precise to get to us in the first place. But what comes out are two different types of uh, solar flare emissions. And these are basically, um, think of it like more like an, a radio type frequency, a radio transmission, because that's what gets affected. If you know a ham operator, my brother is a ham operator, or my very good friend Ken is a ham operator. And these guys in Houston, my buddy, um, you know, several that they all are aware of solar cycles. And we are in an 11-year solar cycle that is called Solar Cycle 25. And you can look that up on nasa.gov. This is not astrology. This is astronomy. And during these 11-year solar cycles, of which we are approaching the halfway mark, the activity on the sun, the, solar, the sun flares, the solar spots get more active. What happens is this thrust, of, as, as the emission comes off of the surface of the sun, these emissions start heading out into space. The ones that align with the Earth come in two different forms. One form takes about eight minutes to get here. That was the one that was happening this morning. From the time that it leaves the surface, it travels at the speed of light, and it gets here about, well, eight to 30 minutes usually is the window because it takes a while for that, think of it like a sneeze, to come out and hit us, that wave comes through. The, and, and what happens is the ham operators, the reason I mention that is because the beauty of ham radio is that you can be sitting in one spot, put a tall enough antenna and a powerful enough transmitter, and you can skip your signal across the atmosphere, and it can go literally around the world not during these solar cycles, it cuts it off. So ham operators affect like totally like right now, right here. Uh, GPS satellites get it as well. Um, satellite communication is also sometimes affected. Those are the ways that it typically shows up. And that's why for most of us, there's not an experience of the initial emission. The other emission takes about um, three days to get to the Earth. It travels slower. Same basic effect. 
Well, since I have an arrhythmia in my heart, and you think about what that is, the heart is electrically controlled, right? So I started taking notice and put these apps on my phone to track this. And when one of those solar flares occurs, is there something that happens in my heart? Right now, because of where I am just physically, I'm medicating up to a level with uh, antiarrhythmia medicine that I'm trying to do everything I can to prevent an episode. So I'm not feeling it. But if I were not medicating, I would noticed a definite correlation. Um, and that was my experience. So I thought, well, okay, this does affect us in some kind of way. And it makes total sense to me that it would affect the heart. If it affects a ham radio, it's going to affect transmissions in our body. So I just saw a direct correlation from it. Would most people feel it? No, I don't think so. Um, is it dangerous? No, because the earth <laughs> in God's goodness, uh, put a protective shield around the earth that mostly blocks that stuff out. So it's not something to get overly concerned about. Uh, but that's the nature of when these things go off. The reason I watch it so closely is because I definitely feel that there is some kind of at least noteworthy connection to the electrical system controlling the heart that I want to be aware of. And so when it gets super active like it did, um, then you have to, you know, I, I want to be aware of that. As far as the critical goes, it's almost like volume on, on your car stereo. Soft is the lower level emissions. And then you can have, would you turn that down? That's what we had today. And that's, we had it yesterday too, when those two came together. And I put this stuff in our Facebook group. So that's, that's what it is. That's what those things are. And if you have any questions, just drop them in there. Um, but yeah, they, uh, Melissa says she was in a sad, anxious, angry, well, a lot, uh, and Melissa, you and about a hundred other people that I've heard of, seriously, this is the vibration that's out there right now. And we're going to talk about this, um, uh, because, um, th that's exactly what's, what's going on. So, um, Labor rising. Oh, hope you get feeling better, misbehaving. Well, that's great. And I think this was Roxanne was talking about the Book of the Moon. So thank you. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Um, all right. Oh, there's Brittany. So we had another Brittany. We might have had to, or maybe this Brittany was over in Facebook. <laughs> all right. Obviously, we have this full moon, 3 a.m. Eastern, overnight tonight. And, um, hmm, yeah, yes, it's all over your... <laughs> Rob's on a roll tonight. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Blame it on the sun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the Aries is is getting the direct effect of this. So yes, I mean, when you see comments like this, then you're probably definitely, that could affect Aries. Um, okay, see, look, this is exactly it. All right, um, let's go to, let's go to the next thing here that I just wanted to set up here as far as this eclipse. We're not going to, you know, I try to keep astrology to the astrology podcasts. We've got plenty of that. I like to just talk in plain English and make sure that um, everybody's on the same page with this stuff. So eclipses are basically when the shadows of the sun and the earth pass over or the sun and the moon, uh, as will be the case on the solar eclipse. Um, this lunar eclipse tomorrow from an eclipse perspective is not worth getting up for, really. Uh, the only place that it won't be too visible is across the western part of Africa, if you take a swath of that. The rest of the planet will pretty much be exposed to this. It's stronger across the United States, southern 
hemisphere as well, Canada. Everybody there will have a fairly good view. A full lunar eclipse is a lot more spectacular because the moon turns a shade of red. You probably have seen these. Everybody probably has at some point. This one will not. And this one will barely cast a little bit of a shadow across the moon for the period of the eclipse time. So um, I'm not going to be getting up, but um, it will be happening while a lot of us are asleep, like say 3 a.m. Eastern time, thereabouts. If you go to timeanddate.com, they have a really good uh, tracking of how you can bring it into your time zone. Now, <laughs> what have we been talking about here? Um, that uh, there's a lot of tension in the air right now. And particularly related to separation of relationships is what I've seen, a pattern. Heard of so many people over the last two weeks that have been involved in breakups of some kind or another. So when I looked at the astrology chart on this, the thing that I saw was, I just saw the shadow side, maybe because I've been experiencing it um, and I've been hearing about it, but I uh, was, see, that was a solar flare. <laughs> if your screen blinked, mine did. Um, I, I think that... Um, there's just been a lot of tension built into this. And if you look at the chart, and that's what's in that video, I, I circle everything, we talk about it, we correlate it back to last October, do a, a whole treaty there. So if you're really interested in a deep dive on the astrology, I would say get that. It's on the funastrology.com website right at the top. And um, so, um, coming in waves. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It just hits me um, that there's been a lot of tension in the construction of the alignments of the planets through this. All right. So we've got tension. We have this theme of um, breakup, separation, breakup. And Robert and I were recording this morning and he looked at it and he said, I like this chart of the eclipse. And he went through several positive aspects of it, positive elements of it. And, uh, and I told him, I said, I am so glad to hear this because I'd been seeing the shadow. I'd been feeling the shadow. And he said, well, as they say, it always seems to be the darkest right before the dawn. It's like, wow. I love that. I love that. So if you're feeling this tension and if you're feeling this energy, the one thing that I think is probably the most important thing that we can think about is if you can, if you're in a situation, and this is where I've walked back this thing that happened to me. If I could walk that back and if I had a do-over, the one thing I would do is this. And I was right there, but somebody wanted to talk and I went in to talk and that's when things didn't go well. And Mercury, the planet of communication, is sitting on the North Node. You asked about Aries. The North Node is in Aries and that's a very frisky, aggressive, warrior kind of symbolism. Let's... Uh, Let's fight it out. Let's don't talk it out. Let's go settle this right now, out back kind of thing. Or on a collective basis, let's start a war. So the best thing around that, since that's in the communication path, is obviously to hold your tongue, hold the communication. That's... Um, That's um, the uh, the energy that's there. It's like this, and I'm just seeing here. Um, uh, my his uh, my ex and I have both been at war with each other. Maybe um, 
Hey, Jenny, good to see you in here. Thank you. Yeah, 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 they, they were tied together yesterday. Um, you know, I've got the Jenga blocks, and the Jenga blocks are coming back. <laughs> they are. I've got them in. I unpacked them, and uh, uh, we are doing Jenga blocks again. So uh, the, if you guys, for those of you who weren't here when we were doing that, you know the Jenga game where you build the tower, and you go through and you start to pull the blocks out. That's just like what we're talking about here. That's our life. That's our path. And sometimes we pull a block and boom, the whole thing comes in. And that's what happened to me. You know, it was like, and so some, and then you think, ah, if I could just have it to do over and I wouldn't pull that block for sure, you know, and then you pull on one and one just slides right out or you think one's going to slide out and boom, or you bump it or just all kinds of things. It's a fragile system. And that's the way it is. And our journey is to see how many blocks we can pull out of that tower without the thing going boom. So it's a it's a great um, it's a great analogy for our spiritual path. Um, okay, so let's see. So she was saying her husband, and then I'm breaking up with the old me and starting a new one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's oh so well said. So 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 well said. This is great. Um, so, and thank you for this. I appreciate that. I'll come back and capture that from the comments later. Uh, thank you for thinking of me on that. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, this, uh, this energy is, is, it's very strong right now. And here's the deal. Here's the other thing that, um, all of the planets right now are about that far apart in the, in the sky. So see all the planets came along this circle. And that's one of the things that I've been using is like when people don't think that astrology is spiritual or of God, how did our planets from Mercury closest to the sun to Pluto 3 billion, 3.3 billion miles out, how did they all just fall onto a circle? You want to take some odds? There's casinos all over the place down toward Palm Springs out here. You want to take the odds of that happening down there with ten thousand dollars and see what we come back with <laughs> you get my point right <laughs> like no i don't have ten thousand dollars to lose exactly the chances of that happening randomly are basically zilch so we know that we're talking about and i've got a really cool thing that we're going to do next that really um we are talking about a divine placement and all astrology does is looks at, around a circle, geometry. What is re here related to what's here? That's an opposition. What's here related to here? That's a 90 degree square. It's geometry. It's studying geometry of planets that are 3 billion miles apart from each other that all fell onto a circle. That's all it is. And it, through that study, it shows us energetic paths. So, um, so I'm having trouble focusing, guys. I am so sorry. Just get through it. Just let me let things wave on through. That's how I've been processing. Let me read you this in light of that right there. You know, typically we we go to the light seers deck here. Last week, I mentioned as part of the story, this old pastor that we grew up uh, under his teaching, whose mentor was an old pastor in uh, Norman, Oklahoma, who used the Bible in the same way that we use the deck. Basically, you go to it for guidance and you go to it randomly. So I opened to some passages of scripture and I, I pulled out a Bible and this was the one that came up. And this is from the, you can't make this up department and you can't run away from it either. This is Psalm chapter eight that my randomness fell to. Lord, our Lord, how majestic your name is in all the earth. This conflict over this stuff is so unnecessary. You have set your glory in the heavens. 
Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. This is a Psalm of David, by the way. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place. I'm just kidding, a random selection. What is mankind that you are mindful of them and human beings that you care for them? Looking at all that great, amazing wonder out there, and David says, who are we? We're nothing compared to that. You have made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. You have put everything under our feet. You've made us rulers over the works of your hands. All the flocks and all the herds and all the animals of the wild, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and all that swim in the path of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Boom. Random. <sighs> Sorry, you guys. I'm just... Mm. Thank you for carrying this for a few minutes. Good, Kathleen. I'm glad that it can help. I wanted to be more on my game tonight, guys. I'm sorry. Mm. So thanks for those comments. Um, let's do this. Um, so better times ahead, right? Better times coming. Let's do a new, uh, a full moon ceremony here. The Gospel of Thomas was basically written from a more metaphysical perspective and was excluded from the canon that was put together by the, by the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. So basically that's a good question. I wrote it a long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we're going to release this tension, that's for sure. Ooh, nice. Book of Forgiveness. You know, when I turn to the New Testament, um, the message at the core has to, can only be boiled down to forgiveness and love. So... Thanks for that. Yeah, exactly, Brittany. We do have a creator. There's no doubt. Thanks, Mary. I need a Mary hug. <laughs> mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. I wanted to do the... Um, So for new moons and the way to approach this, I think we have to take both sides on this lunar eclipse. We have to release and then we have to create. So I thought that one thing we could do, um, rebirth, starting anew, exactly. It's the Easter message, isn't it? It really is, which is coming up. Um, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's gotten better since. I've got my drum over here too, and I was going to do some drumming, and that's the reason I was connecting all this stuff and testing it was to lower that sound volume so it didn't overmodulate. But maybe we could do a little drumming with this too. So what I'd like to suggest is just right there. If you have something to scratch something down on, great. If not, just put it in the in the confines of your mind and your consciousness of three things right now, real quick, and I'll I'll do some. Three things that we are grateful for. Let's start with that. So we're going to stay in all high energy. Three things just in your mind. We'll do this together. 
this will be really fun. We'll just do this together. That um, three things that um, we're grateful for. All right. In fact, let's do them. I'll do three of these, and you think of one at each at each beat. All right, here we go. Here's the first one. Think of something you're grateful for. Let's do another one. I love that fade out. And Brittany, I know you have a an amplified ability to love. And it is beautiful. And we love you. And thank you for being back. I missed you. You know, there is something amazing. In North Carolina, this thing was like a wet noodle. <laughs> you could it's like literally like hitting a piece of cheesecloth with with them. Out here, I didn't do one thing. I pulled it out of the box and I set it on the dresser. All right. So it, it works really good. <laughs> How was that too, by the way, on sound? Because I, I would love to just do some drumming. So let's do this. Now we did three things we're grateful for. Go back and think of those really quick. Let's get centered back into this. So the three things that you were grateful for. Number one, I was grateful or I am grateful for. Number two, I am grateful for. And number three, I am grateful for. All right, now we're going to beat this drum as we think of the things that we're going to release. Okay. So I'd like to, you know, I mean, we'll do three here for the um, scope of this, but you might have more that you want to do. And tonight's the night to do it. After we get finished, just keep it right on going. You're right in the energy. Perfect spot. So let's just start thinking of it. like to see missing from your life tomorrow morning. <laughs> A wall. Feeling the tension, let it come up. some things came up there that you would gladly lay on an altar of release.
And obviously the universe fills vacuums and voids. So as part of this powerful lunar eclipse energy, where the sun is in Aries, you were asking about how is Aries affected? The sun and the north node of the moon are in Aries. The moon is in Libra. And they are opposite each other. So there's that opposition energy. And as soon as this eclipse is over, as you'll hear in the Book of the Moon, the moon starts dissipating, and that's the release. So as we are creating things that we would like to see disappear, let's think of the things that we'll fill it up with. So if those things were gone from your life that you listed, and go back to your three things of gratitude for just a second. What are you grateful for? What was number one? What was number two? And what was number three? So that if the, under the power of this eclipse, for all the tension and all the strife and all the uh, conflict and oustering and everything else that's been present over these last couple of weeks, what, if all of that could be gone, what would you put back in its place? If there was a healthy vacuum, a healthy void, what would you want to have? Let's do an ohm together. I'm going to close my eyes, if you can. Close yours. It's just so that we can go in and really feel inside that if this were empty, what would you bring in? So let's do an ohm together. you bringing in What would you fill the void with? Makes the void a lot more willing to get rid of stuff, doesn't it? If you're able, would you just say, I am loving awareness with me a couple of times? I am loving awareness. 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 I 
I love everything I am aware of. I love everything I'm aware of. I love everything I'm aware of. And now bring that, those three things that you would create, those three things that you would bring into your life that are not there now. And magnify them so that they fill the whole space out in front of you. Do each one. Here, I'll do some, some of this. So we can do number one together. The first creation, magnify it really big right out in front of your whole space. go let it fade out now bring your second manifestation the second thing you would bring into your life let it fade out and the third Let's picture just for a brief moment us together in a circle as we've done so many times over the last two and a half years here. And let's picture holding hands. Think of somebody you've been seeing their name or interacting with or seen on the screen. And put one person on your left and put another person on your right. You're holding hands, sharing energy, supporting and yet connected to the group because all hands are connected. So the energy is flowing all around to all of us. We're all connected. And if you would, for me, put in the middle of the circle mental images of a brother, my brother, his wife, my son, his wife, my daughter. Five people. Souls on a journey and people that I love very much. And would you just send love to them in the middle of our circle? Loving awareness. Love for them being on a path, on their path. Love for their struggles and tears and heartaches and victories and everything in between. Just for who they are sharing this journey with us, this same time, this same place. And fill them with your love. And thank you for that. And next, put your three intentions out there in the middle of the circle. So now everybody's intentions are going out in the middle because you're putting yours out there, I'm putting mine out there, and the people you have their hand are putting theirs out there all the way around. And everybody's intentions are in the middle of the circle. And we now send our energy of fulfillment 
to all of those intentions, yours and everybody else's at the same time. May they all fulfill in perfect time, in perfect order, with no pain attached, in perfect ways, for all of our highest good. And then put those things that you're releasing under this full moon. The moon's light is shining brightly on our circle, in the sand, by the beach, with the sea breeze blowing. Put those three things that you want to release out there. And just like before, everybody's is now in the middle of the circle. And let's lift them up with our energy. Just lift them up with the energy that you know you radiate right out of your hands. And lift those items right on up into the sky. Together now, everybody putting your hands out and up. Lifting those things up and up and up. They're way up high now in the sky. They're way out of reach. Collectively. There's a big empty space in the middle of the circle now as those just keep getting higher and higher and higher and higher in the sky. Up, up, up they go to a point where they just dissipate into the ethers and are gone, scattered in the wind, released, floating out, gone, not to be able to be retrieved. And now just sit in that emptiness for a minute. Circle. The night. The moonbeams. The sound of the ocean in your ears. because we know it's from this place of non-attachment that the magic happens. Holding on to nothing, wanting nothing. And from this, we'll begin our week. And now let's act as if we could all get into one great big arm-in-arm -arm ball on the beach. <laughs> A big ball of humanity as we share a great big ohm together. Feeling the love, experiencing the release, enjoying the emptiness. And so it is. And so it is. I hope that was beneficial for you to identify some things that are the drumbeat of what we do, the gratitude, staying in really high emotions and, and then being in that space of emptiness, a beautiful, beautiful place. It did feel lighter, didn't it, Melissa? It was like a great big load just kind of getting lifted. Ah, wow, really nice. Thank you guys for being here. Good, Rob, glad it helped. Thank you for being here. And um, 
hope you guys have a oh, good. I'm glad it helped. Hmm. I know there's a lot going on right now, and I, I mean, I've got another podcast at it, but see, it's six o'clock my time, and I know it's nine and eight and seven for you guys. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to chat up for a few minutes, I can hang around. Um, maybe if it would be therapeutic. <laughs> I know many have to go. You've got kids and duties at home and all kinds of things are working and um but if you'd like to hang around and just be in this space for a few more minutes i don't i, I can do that i have to post tomorrow's fun astrology chet reminded me that i hadn't done that yet and i have to edit an old soul new soul about the eclipse and i want to get that out so um we'll do that oh wonderful glad to have you thank you <clears throat> mm, isn't it though? Hey, Rochelle. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I wish I could see these names. I sure wish. Rob, I hope you're successful at getting a hold of Zuckerberg this week. I really do. <laughs> oh. This is great. Good. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate it. So, um, yeah, if you guys have anything, I mean, we talked about the solar flares. That was a great question from Laura. I appreciate that. Um, any other questions or just holding space or anything you'd like to put out there? Um, these cycles of the eclipse i i put this in the video um, and some of you might have come uh, late but i did create this um, i did create this um, video it's 40 minutes long 39 minutes long and i went through everything so some of that's in there uh, and the benefit there is obviously we've got the chart up and you can see everything. It's on funastrology.com if you like. It's $7.97. I mean, it's like, you know, buy me a coffee kind of thing and you get something back. So um, that was the idea on that. Um, but so a lot of people connect uh, these cycles in astrology back to previous eclipses. And there definitely is that whole... Uh, cycle path. Here's, you know, I think we all have to come to astrology from, or any kind of study from two perspectives. What's there to learn? And you want to learn everything you can about it. And then what's um, practical for your style, your stylistic application, right? So, uh, I know how I'm wired. I've got the sun and Mars together in Scorpio. Everything is passion, intensity, and moving forward. Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. And I'm a Gemini rising. So my mind, my concentration is about that fast. So um, for me to go looping back at what happened months or years ago, is just not in my construct. So I would not be a good teacher of that. We would need somebody who is in that construct to teach that and to apply that. I can't remember what I did or ate two days ago. I can barely remember yesterday, but I kind of do because I'm just not looking in that direction. So I don't, I haven't applied it. And it is a missing ingredient. It is. But to me, where how would you start to construct that? You'd have to get on a spreadsheet and all this stuff is available. But I would have, for me, I would have to construct a spreadsheet 
of all of these eclipses. And then I'd want the charts because then you have to bring the chart back up and look at what house was it in and what were the different aspects and the signs and everything. And that's just more study and connection. And to really do it right would take quite a bit of time. But I do believe that these things run in cycles. Now, not this past Saturday, but the past Saturday, Ray Merriman talked about this. And he said that these lunar eclipses, now remember, this is a guy, first of all, that's been doing this since the early 70s. So he's got the experience. He was a Goldman Sachs Wall Streeter kind of guy. He, he worked in investment firms that uh, were doing analytical research on the market cycles. And he looked over at astrology and he realized, well, the same patterns that they were seeing in the markets are the same time patterns that correlate to the planetary movements. So he just figured, well, if you if that's showing it, then that's I can look in, at that and predict it out and see what's going to happen and the, you know, what the where the cycles are going to be in the future. And he said that these lunar eclipses usually show up about three weeks prior to and three week, three months after, three weeks before, three months after. And the lunar eclipse, I believe, was um, uh, it was a couple of months before, maybe three, and then 18 months after, if I remember right. So uh, that gave me a nice little window. I mean, I can get my arms around that. And that's why in the video, we went back and looked at um, uh, the, the eclipses from October. But even that, I don't see, I mean, to me, it's all about right now. What are we doing with today? You know, and yes, there might be some lessons. And actually, this whole thing that I've been through did kind of correlate to the house axis of the um, uh, uh, the lunar eclipse last time, which was in Scorpio and uh, Taurus. But it was in the eighth house and the second house. And that just correlated exactly to what I've been going through. So I thought, hmm, okay. I did. I saw that and I thought, well, okay. And, and so what, <laughs> you know, it's like, what did I not do last time that I didn't, that, it, you know, maybe got whacked up. So maybe if I'd been better last time in the, in October that I wouldn't be going through this, I don't know, you know, but that was, um, uh, it was interesting to see that. So, um, good question. I hope that answered, uh, kind of the thought of what you were talking about. Oh, 14 hours, Melissa. We headed up. Uh, let's see. Here's the little header for it, and it's 14 hours. So you see there, 13 hours and 56 minutes. <laughs> like, dang, that's a long book. <laughs> but yeah, good. You'll love it. I mean, you will absolutely love it. Oh, great, Kathleen. Good deal. Um. Last was uh, the last full solar eclipse that was visible in the United States. But no, that that just and the next one is not for 20 years. So it will be in 2044. So there's no direct correlation or cycle or pattern there. We just happened to hit these two. But the last one was in 2017. That's the one that I saw in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Yeah, you know, and the thing that's different about the eclipses, and Robert and I were talking about this today, was the, the thing that's different about the eclipses is their proximity to the nodes of the moon. So basically, the um, declinations are closer to the equator is basically what you're looking at with that. And that's what has to happen anyway for there to be an eclipse, because if it's higher or lower, then it doesn't have that shadow. But... Um, so the, the nodes being the point of the two intersections, you have to get on a map and look at this. You have to just call up nodes of the moon on Google and look at the images, and that will imprint in your mind what the nodes of the moon are. They are intersection points of the orbit of the moon around the earth and the orbit of the earth and the moon around the sun. And where those points intersect, well, now that intersection is happening closer to the equator. So that's the difference of the energy strength from that standpoint if you think about it. So there's more alignment between the Earth's the sun and the moon during these eclipses. And um, that's um, 
have the sun and Mars at 29 degrees, 11th house Capricorn. Okay. Sun and Mars and Capricorn. I feel you about the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Multi-column spreadsheet, right? Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. That's what I would have to do if I were going to trace back. And it would be a good thing to do. If any of y'all want to send me that for a birthday or Christmas present that you've already done it, that would be great. Thank you very much. It would be a good thing to put the eclipses just to go back because it's not specific to somebody's chart. You're just, you're logging. And I'm, it probably exists out there. Somebody has got to have done this where you just put on a spreadsheet so that you can maintain it going forward, but to catch it up to where uh, you have, I don't know how far you'd go back, 20, 30 years, maybe something. If you were really wanting to do a, a good research project, I would go back at least 10 if I were just saying, okay, I'm going to do this for 10 years. But I really think you ought to go back at least 20 or 30 years. And then you have all of the, so that's twice a year, two eclipses each, so four eclipses per year. So, you know, I mean, it's a sizable project and you have to go back and look it all up. You have to cast the charts. You have to look at what degree it's in, what sign it's in, what house it's in. And that's where I was saying is, I mean, this is not a, an easy project to do, but that's what this spreadsheet would look like. And um, then you would put the charts in your astrological software so that as you were looking through that, um, you know, then what you could do, actually, if you have that spreadsheet, think about it. If you have that spreadsheet and you then we're looking at like a life event happens, like for me, second, eighth house, very second, eighth house, and very Taurus Scorpio and very Libra Aries. Well, the last, these last two eclipses in October, the solar was first and lunar was second. So the solar eclipse was Aries Libra. And the lunar eclipse later in the month was the Scorpio Taurus. Well, and second and eighth. So I could look down there. I could see Libra Aries. Okay, boom. Well, there's one. And then you could go back and look at, um, uh, you could go back and look at this, the houses, second, eighth, and you go, oh, wow. Okay. So where else did this show up? My problem is so many people do remember what was going on. You know, if you look back seven years, I don't then it gets into the you're journaling around what's going on in those eclipses. You'd have to go back and construct that. And that's just, you know, more than I've got. So great question though. Thank you. Really great question. What was the quote from Robert that you were going to tell us about your conversation this morning? So he, we, we had gotten, we had gone through this question from somebody about being born on eclipses. And we were about 20 minutes in and, uh, I, I, I thought, well, let's look at the yod because there's a big yod in tomorrow. Well, there's a yod right now. And there were two on Friday. And I thought, well, let's, let me show him this yod and just get some comment. And I have to be careful because when we're on a track, I like to keep Robert on that track. He doesn't shift lanes very easily. So I was like, it was a little dicey to put that out there, but I thought, let's let's just see. And the other thing is, the Old Soul podcast is obviously like the Subconscious Mind podcast. It's one that will be referenced for years to come. So uh, it's more, it's not so much right now. It's more, you know, we don't want to be talking about this eclipse unless there's a good lesson in there. But I put it out there and we put the chart up and and uh, he said, oh, I like this. I like this chart. And he saw the positive sides of the collective Venus separating from Saturn or, or conjoining Saturn. But in Pisces, a collective sign of new beginnings and new births and Venus being positive in the sign of Pisces. And he saw the Jupiter uh, Uranus as a very powerful uh, element of, Tor of Taurus energy, things around Taurus, money, love, home, etc., and then up to the south node where we're resolving these things that are standing in the way. And I said, man, I am so glad to hear you take the positive side of this because I've just been experiencing and people have been commenting on the negative side of it. And he said, well, you know, like they say, it's always often darkest right before the dawn. So as he was saying, 
good times are coming. <laughs> Hang on. It's going to flip. This is temporary. Good times are coming. And that was the quote. And I just was like, oh, I just, that was so, I so appreciated that. Just loved it. Uh, Easter will have you level up or will you take a break? No, we're going to level up. We are going to level up. We are absolutely going to level up. And, you know, it's um, uh, those who can. It's kind of like any other holiday. Those who can, welcome. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Database of past astrological events and coinciding world events. Chris Brennan and friends have it. Okay, great. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. That's, and there's a link. Wow, great. Okay, so those of you on Facebook, there it is. Sorry, uh, YouTube folks, um, but uh, you have to try to capture that, but um, maybe take a screenshot of it. have to type it all in there, but that's great. Chris is so good at that. Such a great contribution to those of us who study these things to have that resource. So thank you all. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Great, Esmon. That's awesome. Cool. Good. It's going to get better. I know this has been a season. Man, I've felt it just right in there. If you're feeling it, I have felt it. Oh, I have felt it. But it's going to get better. It's absolutely going to get better. And what I have to have hope is that the better is going to be so much better. This is where I go back to and just love what Bob Proctor taught in that secret science of getting rich program that helped change my life was the law of polarity. For every action, there is an opposite action. So as he said, if you've had a little bad in your life, you're going to have a little good in your life. If you've had a lot of bad in your life, you're going to have a lot of good in your life. There is a law. There is a spiritual law of polarity. So where something happens over here, it has to counterbalance over here. And I'm just standing in that. I'm totally standing in that. So good things, really good things are coming because there's just been a lot of, you know, but also we don't stay in the, we don't, we don't wallow in it. You know, I, um, I got it out, and I know you guys were, um, so many of you were following my cross-country trip and knew how anticipatory my Dallas arrival was, and you were right there with me on it, and I, I couldn't not tell you what happened, because you're, 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 my, you're my partners in this, and we are a family, and I knew that there would be love and prayer and I know some shock and everything. It wasn't what any of us expected, but you guys just were so great and so many messages. And I know there are a lot in Facebook and there were a, a number of them on YouTube that I've not had time to respond to and just know that I kind of had to do what I had to do to, to emotionally and physically go through this, but you guys were there and you, you know, and, and, and yet those words that I used were hurtful to my family. And I get that. But uh, what I tried to communicate was that that was the pain that I was feeling in, in, on my side. Not that it was one-sided, not that it was unilateral. But I just had to get that out. And that's I, when I went back and realized, gosh, that was just last week. Uh-oh. Um, I mean, there has been a lot of healing this week. Susan picked up on it. That... Um, we don't stay in it. And now I'm praying and holding. And one of the things that I put in the middle was healing for all of this. And um, not to release, to create. <laughs> there will be healing. And um, mm. you know, Rochelle, one of the things that I've learned through all of this stuff that I've done and working with Fred and all those books of Fred's that are so good, 
And by the way, we've taken all of Fred's high timeline books and put them on his own page at high, hightimelinebooks.com. So they're just links to Amazon. They're links to get them. Um, and you and if you want to go to Apple Books, you have to do that. You know, you'd have to find that yourself. But I just put the links to Amazon so that you could go there and you can buy the. You don't have to have an Audible subscription. You go to Amazon, you can buy it just as a as a book. You know, by itself one. Um, and I, uh, Book of the Moon was cheaper on Audible than it was on iTunes when it came out. So go figure. I mean, it's random. You just have to shop it around. But between those two, and uh, neither are interested in doing the Spotify thing. So Fred, even though he's doing his narration now, um, will be on Audible. Uh, and Steve and Tony didn't want to move over to Spotify either. So um, we'll stay there and I'm hoping that High Timeline Publishing becomes a place where all the audiobooks are able to be distributed out from in the future. So hopefully that. But um, all that work is culminates in exactly what you're saying here. That if we realize that if we stay in the energies of gratitude and love and forgiveness and the high vibrations and we stay out of the, the things like anger and guilt and shame and division and lack of forgiveness. I've really realized that unforgiveness is just as toxic of an energy and probably one of the lower energies that we can participate in. And it really is true that the vibrational match is that if we are vibing high, good things will energetically, magnetically come to us. And if we're vibing in those low energies, then negative reciprocal kinds of things will come to us from being in that energy. And I realize that the collective, like when I was in my little bubble in North Carolina, it was pretty easy to stay in that vibe. When I get out, you know, moving around and being like in, you know, experiencing normal life, it's a lot easier to get sucked into the collective energy or the energy of the people that we spend the most time with or the people that are around us the most. So when that happens, that's where we have to really kick in our spiritual practice because we're around that energy, but yet we don't want to participate in that energy. But it's almost like saying, I got to cross the street and it's pouring outside and I can't get wet. No, you're going to get a little wet. When you get over there, you have to dry off. So it, you know, you just have to, we have to do and be and experience everything that we have to experience, but we really hold to our commitment and yes, be aligned in those high vibrations. And when we get off of it a little bit, we get out of whack a little bit, we get back on. And what I experienced was the physical depletion of the move and the emotional depletion. The van had those troubles, the awning and the booze bottles that people were throwing at it and this kind of thing got me off my game. It got me off my emotional center. It got me off my balance. And then all of a sudden your mind is thinking about all these other things. And then something comes in from the side that wasn't expected. And if you're a Scorpio anyway, with Mars and the sun together, you don't have a chance. You just don't have a flipping chance. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, we are. It is such a great group. I'll tell you, it is such a great group. And I know a lot of you have become friends and um, have enjoyed each other's company and people in certain geographies have gotten together and it's just um, really special really special and it's a privilege to just be with you guys so so yes we will meet next week and i probably had better sign off here and start doing some editing and get this other stuff done because i know that i've been up since about real early this morning and i'm going to need to go to bed here before too long i'm trying to stay as close as i can to the eastern time zone with my schedule so um, about seven o'clock, I start folding up, <laughs> but, uh, 
Oh, great to see you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. And I just can't say thank you enough for all of your support through a tough time. Um, I just used this, these podcasts and this platform to be real with a life that is on a journey, just like you. And, uh, and sometimes that's tough and it's tough for anybody on a journey, you know? So it's just as real. I don't, I don't hide behind some all is well facade when it hurts, it hurts. And I'm not afraid to hang it out there or to cry in public or anything else. So thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful week. I love you so much. Thanks for being here tonight. Yep, we'll be back next week and the week after that and the week after that. We'll keep it going. All right. Have a great week. I'll see you on the podcasts. Bye-bye.